Dear students, now we are going to derive input impedance and transfer impedance of the transmission line. Input impedance is defined as the ratio of voltage to current at the sending end of a transmission line. It is denoted as Zs which is equal to Vs by Is. So now we are going to derive the input impedance of the transmission line. We have already derived the general equations for the voltage and current of a transmission line in the previous lecture video. Here we are going to use those equations directly. So here sending in voltage Vs is equal to Vr cos h square root of Zyl plus Z0 divided by Zr sin h square root of Zyl and the sending in current Is is equal to Ir cos h square root of Zyl plus Zr by Z0 sin h square root of Zyl. Okay here this Vr is the receiving end voltage, Ir is the receiving end current. Z0 is the characteristics impedance, Zr is the receiving end impedance, okay. So after that we have to substitute the values of Vs and Is in this Zs formula. So we can get Zs that is input impedance is equal to Vs by Is. Then we have to substitute those equations here. In the next step, according to Ohm's law, this Vr can be written as Ir into Zr. V is equal to I into Z here. Correct? Then we can write that equation as such. In the next step, we can divide Ir in the numerator and denominator. At the same time, we have to replace the square root of Zy as propagation constant gamma. Gamma is equal to square root of Zy. Then this equation becomes Zs is equal to Zr cos H gamma L plus Z0 by Zr sin H gamma L divided by cos H gamma L plus Zr by Z0 sin H gamma L. Do you all understand this? So in the next step, for further simplification, we have to take this Z0 as a LCM in the denominator and take it outside, okay? Then the denominator becomes 1 by Z0, Z0 cos H gamma L plus Zr sin H gamma L. So next we have to move this Z0 to the numerator. Then we can get the input impedance Z is equal to Z0 into Zr cos H gamma L plus Z0 sin H gamma L divided by Z0 cos H gamma L plus Zr sin H gamma L. So this is the input impedance of the transmission line. For further simplification we have to take cos h gamma l as a common term from the numerator as well as denominator then zs becomes z0 cos h gamma l into this term becomes zr right we have taken this cos h gamma l as a common one so this term becomes zr plus z0 here it is sin h gamma l divided by cos h gamma l similarly in the denominator cos h gamma l as a common term into z0 plus zr sin h gamma l divided by cos h gamma l. As we know that sin by cos is nothing but tan, correct? Then we can divide cos h gamma l in the numerator and denominator. Zs is equal to z0 into zr plus z0 sin by cos is nothing but tan h gamma l. Here z0 plus zr tan h gamma l, okay? So after that we have to substitute this tan value in terms of exponential. Tan h gamma l is equal to e power gamma l minus e power minus gamma l divided by e power gamma l plus e power minus gamma l. Okay then we can take that LCM on the numerator as well as denominator. Then we can get same term here. For taking LCM on the numerator and denominator, we can get this Zr is multiplied with this term e power gamma L plus e power minus gamma L plus Z0 e power gamma L minus e power minus gamma L divided by this term. Similarly, in the denominator, we have to multiply this value with this Z0, okay? Then multiply all the terms inside this values, okay? So here this value and this value both divided each other, okay? So after multiplying inside each values, we can get Zs is equal to Z0 into Zr e power gamma L plus Zr e power minus gamma L. 
plus z naught e power gamma l minus z naught e power minus gamma l divided by z naught e power gamma l plus z naught e power minus gamma l plus z naught e power gamma l minus z naught e power minus gamma l. So now here z values are common, but now we are going to take e power gamma l e power minus gamma l as a common term. For that we can take this e power gamma l term here e power gamma l e power gamma l. So the remaining terms are z naught plus z r. Similarly, e power minus gamma l is a common term here. We can get z r minus z naught. The same way we can take the common term in the denominator. We can get e power gamma l this two. Okay, z naught plus z r. So we want to get z r minus z naught. For that here you can see this. This is plus z naught e power minus gamma l. Here it is minus z r e power minus gamma l. We want to get z r plus z r. For that we can take minus e power gamma l as a common term. Do you all understand? So here minus e power gamma l into z r minus z naught. In the next step, we are going to take z naught plus z r as a common term from the numerator as well as denominator. Then we can get z naught into z naught plus z r into e power gamma l. We have taken this term as a common one. So this term becomes e power gamma l plus e power minus gamma l. This term is divided by z r plus z naught because we have taken that value as a common one, right? The whole divided by the same way we can take z naught plus z r as a common value. So z naught plus z r into e power gamma l minus e power minus gamma l z r minus z naught divided by z r plus z naught. Do you all understand this? Then we can divide these two values. Okay. Finally, we can get z s is equal to z naught into e power gamma l plus e power minus gamma l z r minus z naught divided by z r plus z naught. The whole divided by e power gamma l minus e power minus gamma l z r minus z naught z r plus z naught. Okay. If the value k is equal to z r minus z naught divided by z r plus z naught, then z yes that is the input impedance of the transmission line can be obtained as z s is equal to z naught e power gamma l plus k e power minus gamma l divided by e power gamma l minus k e power minus gamma l. This is the final simplified input impedance value where k is equal to z r minus z naught divided by z r plus z naught. By using this formula, we can solve problems. Okay, if the transmission line is terminated with its characteristic impedance, that means z r is equal to z naught means this k becomes zero. Z r is equal to z naught means the whole term becomes zero. Then we can get that is input impedance z s is equal to z naught into e power gamma l divided by e power gamma l e power gamma l gamma l both cancel or divided each other. Then we can get z s is equal to z naught. If the transmission line is infinite, then the input impedance of an infinite line is determined by using l tends to infinite. So if l tends to infinite means then we can get z s equal to z naught. Okay. Next one is transfer impedance. It is defined as the ratio of voltage at the sending end to the current at the receiving end. It is denoted as z t, which is equal to v s by i r. Okay. V s means sending end voltage. I r means receiving end current. Here, this transfer impedance is widely used to determine. The current at the receiving end if the transmitting voltage is known. Okay. Now we are going to derive the transfer impedance. For that we can consider another form of sending end voltage of the transmission line. That is Vs is equal to Vr Zr plus Z0 divided by 2 Zr into E power gamma L plus K E power minus gamma L. As we know that IR is equal to VR by ZR. This is the Ohm's law. And reflection coefficient K is equal to ZR minus Z0 divided by ZR plus Z0. So then we have to substitute these two values in this equation. So here this VR divided by ZR is nothing but IR. That is receiving and current. 
So Vs is equal to IR into ZR plus Z0 divided by 2 e power gamma L plus this K can be replaced with the term ZR minus Z0 divided by ZR plus Z0 into e power minus gamma L. Okay. Then we can consider the transfer impedance formula that is Vs by IR. Substitute the value of this Vs here. IR into ZR plus Z0 divided by 2 e power gamma L plus ZR minus Z0 divided by ZR plus Z0 into e power minus gamma L. The whole divided by IR. Then we can divide the IR values in the numerator and denominator. Then we can get the transfer impedance ZT is equal to ZR plus Z0 divided by 2 into e power gamma L plus ZR minus Z0 divided by ZR plus Z0 e power minus gamma L. For further simplification, we are going to take the LCM within this bracket. Then we can take that value like this that is e power gamma L is multiplied with this term ZR plus Z0 plus this term ZR minus Z0 into e power minus gamma L. In the denominator, we are having the common term ZR plus Z0. Then we can divide these two. Okay, so that we can multiply the value of e power gamma L inside this bracket and e power minus gamma L inside this bracket. Then we can get 1 by 2 into ZR e power gamma L plus Z0 e power gamma L plus ZR e power minus gamma L minus Z0 e power minus gamma L. Okay, this 1 by 2 is common for all the terms. Then we have to take Z value as a common one. So we can compare this one. Okay, ZR here is ZR. Then we can take ZR as a common one. The remaining terms are e power gamma L plus e power minus gamma L divided by this two. Plus Z0 is common here. Then we can take the remaining values e power gamma L minus e power minus gamma L divided by two. Okay, as we all know that e power gamma L plus e power minus gamma L divided by two is nothing but cos H gamma L. Similarly, e power gamma L minus e power minus gamma L divided by 2 is sin H gamma L. Finally, the transfer impedance of the transmission line is obtained as ZT is equal to ZR cos H gamma L plus Z0 sin H gamma L. Okay, this is the final answer.